during the break, we, there was a question about the references on who came up with this adaptive change cycle. And the best uh, reference here is this book called Panarchy by Lance Gunderson and Buzz Hallney. They've got a great resource online called the resiliencealliance.org. It's by the Swedish, the Stockholm Resilience Institute. Yes? Um, and this is a model that came out of ecosystem science. It's empirically grounded. They derived this after looking at how real systems behave, starting primarily with lake systems, and then starting to apply that to much larger systems, forests, entire regional uh, water management issues. So they're big in water management here. And the question of agency is key also because their major objective is policy, informing policy where humans are interacting dynamically with the, the organization, or with the ecosystem. Um, and what you find is this whole entity system dualism is that actually if you look at humans and the ecosystem as part of the same system, then this whole thing, then the whole thing goes through the similar process as well. So um, we just decided to go ahead and push on through here and explore what are the implications, what are the strategic implications for this type of knowledge um, and what are the implications for organizational design. Okay, so the question of, of how this information on phase transition and where you are in this cycle of adaptive change and at what scale, I think is essential in driving your strategic mandate for your organization. And so I want to briefly introduce the Kinevin framework by Dave Snowden, well, I think one of the gurus of knowledge management and actually quite active in policy formation nowadays through his consultancy, Cognitive Edge. Um, this is a framework of different types of knowledge in different types of environment. And very briefly, these include five categories. It's simple environments, complicated environments, complex environments, chaotic environments, and totally disordered environments. I'm going to explain each of these in a second. Um, and there's a lot of, I drew this myself, there's a lot of uh, kind of crap drawings of this online, so I figured if I'm going to be referencing it, I should do my own, and I'll put this online for anyone else who wants to use it. Um, so I think one of the key issues then, if we're looking at, sorry, one of the key questions, if we're looking at, well, how does this uh, theory of adaptive change and this realization that different scales go through these processes at different, at different times, and what we're really interested in, given that we have this moral or ethical responsibility to manage this appropriately in the world that we're facing, what kinds of knowledge are appropriate for this trip, collapse phase and this reorganization phase? So to make this work, I'm going to do my own little mashup here and just reorganize these a little bit. Apologies. Dave Snowden, if you're watching this video online in the future. And I think this gives us something which I'm calling the Kinevin Plus. Kinevin Plus, okay? And this then defines, this adds the time dimension to this type of, uh, different types of knowledge and strategies. So let's start down here, right? This is in the growth phase, the fast moving phase, where you have uh, a variety of competing species, but it's not total innovation. There have been some competitive advantages already had. These are, this is a situation where your problems they're open-ended, okay? You have a range of possible answers, but not an infinite amount of answers. They therefore require analysis and investigation to understand what's the best uh, approach. This is essentially like an expert model, right? You have a variety of possibilities, but it's not infinite. It's bounded, and it's just up to you to analyze what's going on. So uh, Snowden suggests that the type of strategic guidance that you should follow is essentially a sense analyze and respond framework. So you sense what's going on in your environment, you analyze that information, and you respond appropriately. There's uh, this issue of skills, which I'll show here. I think it's going to make more sense about how much time it takes to develop the skill sets necessary to deal with this. Uh, I've seen it argued that these types, this type of knowledge to operate effectively in this type of environment takes around a thousand hours uh, to master. So that's about six months if you're working on it full time. But if you think about this in job training stand, sort of like you're in a new job and you have to train yourself or you're doing a master's degree or something, right? You're generally not really working full time. You don't get the kind of experiment with these types of problems full time. So in reality, I think this is more like a year, maybe a year and a half or two years before you can say you've kind of mastered your environment in this type of situation. Now moving up in the cycle of adaptive change, as you begin to have more consolidation of actors, having bigger influence, sequestering more resources and capital in a more connected fashion, you have this simple framework. So this is enough, this kind of knowledge necessary to, to strategize and act in this environment are, could be called simple, right? This is, these are problems that are well known. This is essentially the bureaucratic model, right? You have one answer or a few right answers that best, practice, that best practices, standard operating practices, bureaucratic response can deal with very effectively. 
This is the mining metaphor. You've sorted everything out, you've got most of the environment under control, and your job is just to repeat. You're just exploiting the advantage that you already had, you're exploiting the things that you already have. So in this sense, you're actually, your flexibility is less because you've invested in certain systems. This is the social technical lock-in. Uh, and you therefore sense your environment, you categorize what's coming across your desk, and you respond relative to your standard operating procedures. It's been said that these kinds of skills take about 10 hours to master. This is why, essentially, in both big bureaucracies, people are interchangeable. Because the rules are written very clearly so that anyone can go in there and understand them and figure them out. This is also why bureaucracies are vulnerable to change. Because when things go beyond the standard operating procedures, they become uh, much more difficult to deal with. And that's what then gets you into this chaotic realm where you're not even sure what the data is. You don't know what's data, what's solution, what's problem. There are no answers, right? So this requires really novel practices. This is like crisis management. And what you do in this case is you actually have to create, you have to create your strategic imperative. You do creative action in a way that you act first, you sense the result, and then you respond. So you don't know what's going on. You don't, I imagine this, I have a one-year-old baby boy, right? And right now he's learning to walk, and he's learning what's edible, and he's learning what hurts, right? And the way he does that is by going out and just flailing every single thing he finds. <laughs> like bangs on it, this is cool, this isn't cool. This is interesting, this is edible, this isn't edible. So he's just doing. And by doing, he's creating phenomena that he then senses and interprets and pieces things together. Now, this is going through the crisis phase. Now, we're interested then in this reorganization phase, because I think this is the most appropriate for, for organizations, these two phases of collapse, uh, transition, and into reorganization. So this is where complex knowledge comes into play, and this is the issue of coevolution. Well, your problems and your solutions, they're evolving together. This is basically pattern management, right? You do one thing that affects something else, that then affects something else as well. So you, there is no right answer, and the best way to interact in this environment is through experimental practice, right? You have to do something, and then monitor it, and you may do a few things, and then monitor them. So you're producing experiments, in the, the notion that you're probing things. You're probing, you're seeing what the results are, and then you're responding, you're acting accordingly. And this is constantly going on now. In terms of the amount of time it takes to master this, this is closer to what you know, Malcolm Gladwell and some of the um, some of the other uh, behavioral scientists have said it takes around 10,000 hours to master. Again, if you're doing full time, that's five years of full time work. But in reality, we don't have full time exposure to these kinds of problems. So it generally tends to take 10, 15, or 20 years, depending on the kind of environment you're in. So before one can say you actually really understand what these environments are like and how to respond, it takes a long time to deal with them. Okay, so really what we're interested in then in this Connect and Plus framework are these two phases, right? We understand this is very well understood. Basically, every MBA, every organization is designed to identify opportunities, grow the business, get to a large position, lobby the regulators, improve your advantage, consolidate your resources, etc. Right? But as we all know, that, that because the environment changes around your big organization, you become fragile, exposed to, to um, threats, and you're less able to adapt, and the system goes through this cycle of collapse and reorganization. So the things we're really most interested in in terms of strategic mandates for an organization are this chaotic kind of knowledge and this complex kind of knowledge. And putting this then in this whole framework of multiple time scales, spatial scales, and organizational scales, I'm going to be even cheekier here and take Snowden's framework and go from Kinevin Plus to Kinevin 4D, right? Four dimensionality. So we've got chronology here and also uh, sp multiple spatial scales and multiple time scales going on simultaneously. So the key, the key guidelines in this, these two phases of collapse, where you're in this chaotic situation, you don't know what's going on, everything's confused, you have to act first, you're just creative, you're just being creative, you're just doing something, you act, you sense, and you respond. And this is actually the quickest part of the process, right? You're never in perpetual, uh, perpetual crisis, despite what the Marxists would have us believe. Um, we ultimately always get into a position of um, some degree of reorganization, Right? And this happens fairly rapidly, especially compared to this, this part of the cycle. So in this sense, it's this type of probing, sensing, and responding. Probing, sensing, and responding at multiple scales. Right? And what this, as general strategic guidelines, what these mean in reality is going to vary depending on what scale you're at. 
So this is where all of this theory actually becomes quite practical, I think, for organizational design.